Hi, my name is Benedict for Higher Hertz. In this video, we are looking at Zebra Let from Uhi. Oh, sorry, my bad, that's Zebra. Uh, Zebra actually comes with Zebra Let, or if you download Zebra Let for free, then the demo of Zebra comes together. And I always forget how beautiful sounding Zebra is. It is really a very special instrument. I can understand how and why uh, Mr. Zimmer he apparently used it so much, so much he ended up with one with his name on it. It is a beautiful instrument. Zebra Let is a cut down. It's essentially one of the types of oscillators that you can get in the instrument. And it's pretty special. It's got some slight funny things you've got to come to terms with. And he has his way. He's a definite kind of a fellow, but I respect what he does tremendously. One of the first things that you'll notice is, as he says, this is an oscillator. There's no filter. <laughs> but before you freak out, it's a additive style oscillator. Uh, which doesn't mean that it's going to sound thin or weh. Um, Uhi's stuff always sounds great, and I really like the zebra sound probably more than much of the much of his other instruments or um, Bidzilla. I really like Badzilla. I really really like as well. It's a very cool sound, but you get a nice warm liquid moving sort of sound. Uh, there is a kind of a filter, but this is not a subtractive synth in reality, even though you can do absolutely beautiful subtractive style sounds with it. Probably the first thing that we will have a look at is presets. Now let's make sure that we've actually got our MIDI focused to this, because I have a sneaky feeling we don't. Now, now we do. How's that for one oscillator? To be fair, there are 11 of them going at once, but we've got the one four. There are quite a lot of presets. There is a set here. There are sets in here. To be honest, I haven't fully understand how it works, but there are lots of sounds from the disgustingly ugly through to the truly beautiful. And there's a nice system in here that tells you how to use the patch. If there are any particular things you need to know, like using the mod wheel. Jar's capable of such beautiful sounds. There are some things that I find a little hard to get my head around, but they don't get in the way of ability to produce a really wide range of sounds from simple analog style uh, synthesizers right out to, to great big omnispherical soundscapes. Good as any hubscot synthesizer. And largely built into categories. Because of the way that what this, the oscillator is built around an, an assisted additive model, you can get a very wide variety of sounds. As you hear, we've got FME kinds of things, along with plenty of what people would take to be analog type things. Manly. Now, 
I actually haven't really used Zebra. For some reason, I've never picked up on and actually used it. I know a time or two I've thought, oh gee, that's pretty good, because I'm really taken with Zebra, even though I have never actually owned it. Um, but for some reason, I just haven't used it. But as soon as I got this, downloaded it, and thought, oh, hello, that's really good. It went into a piece. And I have to remind myself to use an awful lot more. So a large variety of presets, which are beautiful all in their own way. As is usual for me, I would far rather build my own. But let's have a look at Uhi and what he's about. Uhi's a pretty important name in VST. He's not as bandied around as he was. Uh, his development seemed to slow down, at least publicly. Like, where's Zebra 3? Um, a couple of times I've been like, oh, I'll get Zebra. But then there's talk about Zebra 3 and it's not shown. But something that we just saw was that in conjunction with Bitwig, uh, they are launching a new plugin interface format. And we sort of go, oh god, no, not again. But it's, it's one to be followed with a certain amount of interest, other than the name. Calling it Clap is... Uh, possibly not well thought through uh, with regards to that word's a um, slang usage. Um, it's a thing that you wouldn't want in slang, but the concept of what they're talking about and showing so far uh, is is pretty positive. There are a few other um, open source and freeware people who have sort of jumped on Surge and Vital um, uh, that... Uh, means that the format might go somewhere, but VST is a big one to overcome. And we've proven many times in the market with things like um, VHS versus Beta, uh, MP3 versus OG uh, versus Flark, that, uh, that the best format doesn't always win. Often just the established format wins because people don't want to change their technology. But nonetheless, I think it's very, very interesting. Maybe that's part of where um, his time has been going. Um, but I would very much like to see some advancement, particularly to see, well, what can Zebra 3 bring? Because Zebra 2 is, is long in the tooth. Um, not that it diminishes its ability or its charm, but it'd be nice to have something even newer. And maybe once Clap is established, we will see 3 come out, and that will probably be a part of a driver towards encouraging um, take up for Clap. We shall see, but doesn't get in the way. But Uhi is one of the most powerful and important sort of independent developers, and he doesn't seem to belong to Native Instruments or Waves or anybody else. He's, he seems very rigidly, difficultly um, individualist, and mostly that is way for much for the better, and I would like to see a lot more developers behave the way that Uhi does, not necessarily with his little difficult side, but that is the inevitability of an individualist who sort of says, no, this is my, this is my turf and this is where I'm going to fight and he doesn't spend his time pandering or worrying he knows he's got high quality product so he doesn't need to spend his time constantly having sales and doing flim flam and that I like tremendously about him I admire him for that as he says very openly here zebra letters are a version of a trojan horse it's free it's a zebra 2 oscillator when you download it you're going to get a demo of zebra as well because we want you to buy zebra and you know what zebra really is probably the um one of the best of the the monster or uber synths you know zebra definitely still holds its own in terms of sound ability against any of the big names like Omnisphere or um, Falcon, any of them, there's just something gorgeous about that sound. So, you're in safe hands with Uhi. We will run through the good and bad to get them out of the way, and then we will run through the more interesting part of the program, which is digging right into the instrument, seeing how it works, what we can do with it. What's good about it? Well, it sounds brilliant. It's, if you can't make it sound nice, you're just not trying. 
Um, it really is a lovely instrument with a lot of flexibility. As I said, it's in at its heart, it's an additive engine or a spectral engine. There are lots and lots of those now. Um, Serum was one. Um, uh, Europa, Reasons Europa is another. They're, they're sort of everywhere, and most of the time we don't even realize that we're actually working with an additive engine that's got doohickeys, little masks over the top that we can put on and take off to change the timbre, which is why this doesn't actually need a filter because those additive instruments they have real subtractive filters. Sometimes they have a secondary real subtractive filter, but if you can control your wave well enough, that's all the filter is about. So absolutely top-notch in sound. Even though this is a cut down, he doesn't seem to have taken off anything with regards to the beauty of the sound that comes out of Zebra, which is... I don't think anybody's bettered it. Personally, I don't think he's even bettered it with um, with 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 Diva. Um, I just think that that Zebra is the loveliest uh, that a um, that a software synthesizer can be. Put it in a box, put some knobs on it to tell people that it's uh, that it's analog, and most people would totally fall into that hole and and be upset if you told them otherwise. The sand, as I'm indicating, is capable of being very, very detailed. There's a fair amount of detail in here. You can easily miss that to start with. So take your time working out how it works. It looks like it's going to be, yeah, yeah, another SH-101 or a TB-303 clone just because it, it's, you know, it's a fairly small panel. Uh, but there is a huge amount of detail you can get out of this even with its reasonably limited architecture. And of course, it's free. There is no particular downside here, other than you really do need to read the manual to get the most out of it. You can blunder around, but there are some things that are just not going to come out. So please, don't be lazy, RTFM. The MSEG is a little tricksy. Uh, there is a f unnoted feature uh, which took me quite some time to actually work out, and it was just through, it was like, oh, oh, okay, that's how you do that, that I worked out how to do that, which we will show you later. It's not a big deal, but it was an annoyance to me that this, I can't get this envelope to behave the way I want it to. Oh, that's how you do it. I knew you could do it because I'd seen it done. Uh, the effects, I find a little complex, in terms of their arrangements and how they go, but I'm going to blame that more just on a difference between the way Uhi's brain works and the way my brain works. In terms of sound, they are beautiful and good enough to go to a master every single time. Uh, the only other complaint is really not this, but seeing you bundled it in with it, you're going to cop it, which is the 30 minute timeout on the Zebra demo. Because Zebra is so detailed and you can do so much with it, I'm just starting to find my stride in, in oh, what can I do? And I can build on this, or I can do that, and, 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 it, and it times out on me. And that, to be honest, is a factor in my never having bought it, because I just start to get somewhere, and then it frustrates me. I understand why you do it, because otherwise people will just make whole um, odysseys with the demo, and you've given them this. Um, but, grr, and again, Zebra 3. Right, that's the boring part of the program done. Now we get to do the interesting part. We dig into the features and work our way all the way through the panel of the instrument to help you get going. Yes, it has an init option. Yes, every sound designer needs a true init option. So I'm right clicking here. Whether there's something in here, I don't know. We can restore sounds. We can do that. Yeah, I, I couldn't find it but I kind of remembered, oh, we have an in it. Yes, well done. There has to be one of those, and there is. We might as well start with the boring stuff. First, settings, you look at that and you go, Hoo! that is to allow us to make MIDI assignments. We won't spend any more time in that. There is a MIDI table, so you can control how MIDI behaves in terms of performance. Yep, okay. And then some preferences. Largely, I recommend leave these as they sit. You can control things like sizing of the instrument. The size is reasonably generous. His, his interfaces are always nice and clear, but 
I'm getting old and blind, and because I'm using this for, for demo as well, big is good. You can change a gamma, that's really, really unusual, and he offers you uh, various other things to make things nice. It's nice to have all that kind of level of detail. So, it's oscillator. Everything on this synth, bar the effects, is actually oscillator. Yes, there's MSEGs and their envelopes and what have you, but they're all just acting on the oscillator. There's nothing but oscillator in here. And yes, if you're coming from a subtractive mindset, that can seem upsetting. But again, remember that an additive synth at heart is just controlling the tone you hear, which is the same as the twice the amount of effort approach of build an oscillator, build a filter, glom the pair of them together. We might as well do it in one point, and it provides not only a certain efficiency, I don't know about a code level, but a certain efficiency, but it also provides a tremendous scope for what we can do, because you're not stuck with the same basic sounds. So we've got this wave table. Wave tables here aren't exactly the same as in Serum and what have you, whether you can import or what, I honestly don't know. It's one where you do need to read the manual and you do need to spend some time sitting down and working out how it goes. Yes, we've got a... a preset, which is your three, four, basic tones that we expect to get. So if you want to run as a subtractive, you can do this and then use the, the filter here, which is an effect, not really a filter. It's changing what the spectrum looks like on the inside. That's the heart of how you get your form. There are presets in here. These are not preset presets. These are merely preset oscillator forms. sounds, well, that's what it sounds like. So that's really showing off the additive style feel. I don't know how that one works at all. Um, so you can audition these things. And if I don't want to audition them with the um, the knob, I can set a controller or a modulator to that. We will go back to in it because it's how you make these forms that really gets you to the understanding. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, sixteen slots, which we can tell from our readout up top seeing saying 16 but you can also see that there are some points in between and that's how interpolation happens as in we've got this pole we've got this pole we'll make a pretend pole in between waveform we've got different options there's geomorph spectromorph geoblend and spectroblend Technically correct terms, but OMG, you're going to have to read the manual about 18 times to get your head around what that really means. Simplistically, geomorph means that this looks like the shape of the wave. That's a sawtooth, and blow me down if it doesn't look like a sawtooth. If we turn this into a pulse wave, it now sounds like a pulse wave. So that's, in certain ways, the simplest way to make a waveform in here. Let me get rid of that in theory. Oh no, they've got to be four points in a, in a wave, I think. And the waves always have to end, start and end at zero crossings. Fair enough. So that's how you can sculpt. And I think it's up to 32 points and make your own waves, out of which you can filter should you want to be simplistic about it. We can, of course, also make a completely different type of waveform. 
That one looks like fun. Clicking on one of these moves it to its exact location. Scanning. See us be able to morph between. So, but we would want to to make this perfect. Limit ourselves to one, two, two, because once we go past two, we're starting to get into waveform three. So we can create up to sixteen different waveforms and scan through them. Geomorph is about recreating the picture that we see on the front of an analog synth where it says your waveform looks like this. So it's a that approach. Geo blend is the same thing except we can draw it. Now see how that's drawing with little little lines? That's surefire telling us this is an additive synth. So now I've got nothing in all the others. And that's a waveform that I've drawn. And these can be as wild as you want them to be. Cool. They're the easier two. We then got Spectromorph, which is using the idea of the spectrum. And Spectroblend is an easier way of seeing it. Um, it doesn't seem to be a way to initialize those. Sometimes that's a little annoying. How do I make that be? Oh, clear. There we go. That's what I want. In Geo, Spectro Blend, clear. Nothing. I got nothing. Then I can draw. Oh, it's a sine wave. That's my fundamental. And that's drawing the spectrum, the partials. So the first is the fundamental, then it's the first overtone, the second overtone, the, the blah, blah, up to however many of these, and I'm not gonna sit here and count them. There's quite a few. It tells you in the manual, should you care to know. So you can draw these things like this, and they actually represent what the sound looks like in terms of overtones. If we were to put that into 3D, we get the Joy Division t-shirt, waterfall, thingy that we commonly see in um, wavetable synths. So we can... So we can blend again between those two. And then Spectromorph is the same concept, clear, only it's working on a visual, a different visual representation. So this is like what we saw before, only we're drawing out the the form using something that looks like an oscillator shape. In other words, this is a little like, if we get this over here, That sounds like a filter. So we can actually create a sound, let's say that one there, and then this one here. And that way we've actually created a kind of filter sweep. It's done through additive. And so there are some things which make it sound different, but it is a pretty amazing sort of a sound. We might want to spread that over a little bit more distance, but nonetheless, it is pretty good. And that one's reset itself. The more demand we've obviously got to work out. Oh, okay. 
Actually, no, that's not related to... The fact that they're not related means you've got to kind of... Very, very cool sound in its own way, but it's not going to be... If we do it this way, which is the hard way, it's not going to be the same as a filter, but you get access to a kind of sounds and tones that you just don't any other way. So that's how our waveforms work. We will probably just be a little easier in Geomorph. That's a really tight little pulse. Something that I haven't seen is the ability to put a waveform here and a waveform there and just ask it to, to interpolate or morph between the pair of them. Uh, that I don't think exists. That'll do for now. You can see how that works. We can modulate that with LFOs or whatever. So anything that is here can be done. And at least in reason, it automates beautifully as Uhi's stuff always does. Let's go through these things. We've got, of course, our tuning. Let's just put a little bit of filtering on that because it's at the moment a little eh in these headphones. So four octaves down, four octaves up. And it handles itself pretty nicely with the uh, the pointy squeaky sounds. Double click to reset things. And then fine tuning, 50 cents, so half a semitone. We've then got this single dual quad 11. So dual doubles that oscillator and allows us to detune it. How nice does that sound? A lot of the feeling of sound often on the synth often comes from how it detunes. Hey. Quad. And then 11. <laughs> Sometimes those 11s are just too big to be of much use, but it sure sounds nice. So detune if you just want to tune against another instrument. Dual or higher is detuning against itself. I assume it's just spreading them like this. Phase. Just changes the phase of the wave. If you want to get interesting, then get into pulse width modulation. So that takes this waveform puts it against an inverted version of itself. And goes to almost zero here, and 100% of zero there. So that's pulse width modulation. If we've got a saw, put the pair of them together, we actually get a square or a pulse. So if we modulate this, we get a richer sound. So don't miss the uh, phase modulation because there's a lot of fun to be had in that, in really thickening up forms. Go back to single. Sync, again, one of those things that does nothing until you press the button here. A little odd, but... So be it. So that's hard sync against probably doesn't really matter what this other form is. It's just the zero crossings that matter. So that gives you the gnarly sound. Again, you can modulate that with things. You can ask the oscillator to reset on every note start. So in reset mode, it will sound more digital or more like a 106, a Juno 106, um, almost the SH series. 
uh, with it off, it will sound more loosey-goosey, more analog. Uh, so nice amount of versatility there. As we've seen, each of these is the ability to fly in a modulation source and modulate thereof. Uh, we've handled wave, we've handled sync, all of that, then there's vibrato sitting here on its own. That is tied to LFO1, and initially does nothing because it's working on the assumption of mod wheel. If we turn that down. So, if your mod vibrato initially isn't working, you have a look at your depth mod. It's just the nature of how Uhi sees setting these things up. It's It works fine, you just kind of got to get used to it. If it's the way you think as well, brilliant. If not, I think you've just got to learn to live with it for, well, A, it's free, and B, it sounds so damn good. That handles all of this, which, of course, is driven by the waveform we've got. And the joy is that your waveforms can be constantly moving and changing, either very subtly or very dramatically. Oscillator effects, and this is interesting. Understand, these are effects. Where it says filter, it's not a filter. It's an effect. What it's doing, if we went back to our spectro blend, remember this is literally a picture of, if we put this on a um, spectrum analyzer that showed us this, then this is all the sine waves we would be seeing. This is how that sound would look in our EQ. This doesn't update in real time, but if we were to put a filter, we would simply see these starting to disappear. Because what it's doing, it's telling the sound engine, the additive engine, okay, turn down these, 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 until we're stuck with our fundamental. So he's chosen a preset idea of what that's going to look like. If you wanted to create your own filter shape, then you would do it here. So you could say, okay, here's my here's my roll off here, add a couple more points, point point here. Let's say we had this whoop, let's say we had this like this. That would be flat. We would have our roll off and then we can create a peaky weeky. Hear how that sounds filtery? If we create one low, one high, morph between the pair of them, guess what? We have a resonant filter sweep. It will sound unique to the way this instrument handles the math. So various effects, these are changing at a math level what this oscillator is doing. We can pull the fundamental out. Minus 100 or 100. Minus in terms of the level of a partial is to invert its phase and you will get very interesting results. You can of course modulate all of these. So if we put, let's say this LFO on, That's not my favorite LFO, to be honest. Fundamental, just changing the level of the fundamental. Not super interesting, but great for strings. This is juggling the odd overtones versus the even overtones and moving them backwards and forwards you can get some real nice results from that. Brilliance. Think of it as being a little like a filter. Filter we've already done. It goes from a low pass to a high pass. And that sounds really nice. It would be nice to be able to see a little bit more what these things look like. Uh, maybe if there is a, a Zebralette 2, but 
perhaps comes with Zebra 3. We might see them a little bit more, but you'll work it out. That kind of makes things sound like a pipe organ. That's what he says. This is an uglifier. So if you're looking for ugly sounds, neuro bases or whatever they are this week, that will do them. Phase transfer would indicate that it's changing the phase of partials. That's pretty fm -y. That sounds great. And these will give you a different kind of feel depending upon the wave that's thrown into them and what you're doing with it. Formanty kind of a sound. Cool. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah, that's another one of the nastifiers. Not quite sure what that's doing. Obviously, this is putting a comb through things. Phase distortion means that in the center, the, the shape of the wave should be exactly as we see here. When it's all to one side, then it, the whole wave should be kind of shoved up. So something like, if we, uh, how do I do that? Yeah, if we highlight all those points, something like that. It would move everything across to the one side and then across back to the other side. Does this respond to control Z? No, not so much. Can't blame it for that. Cool. So it's obviously wrapping things from one place to another. Probably nice on analogy style sounds. It seems to move things around. Now you've got a second slot to do exactly the same thing again. So what's happening in one situation will affect what happens in the next situation. So if we have a pair of these moving, then we are going to get pretty interesting results. So if you want to go nasty, it can do nasty. And a lot of that lies in messing up the waveform at heart. You can always, if you've used that pair and then go, oh, but now I need to filter, you can always fly in a second filter from somewhere else. The world is drowning in filters. Mixer, we've got obviously the ability to move ourselves left and right to modulate that. It's overall level. Now this is the overall level that's going into the effects. The overall level of the instrument being the output here. Bear in mind, the effects may change how they sound based upon what you are feeding them. If you are looking to do a tremolo, then uh, you would do that here. Um, um, um. Uh, here we need to... Oh, not that one. LFO one. Uh, that one there. Naming of things I found a little obtuse, but that's just part of the, the way. So that's where you would do your tremolo. Width. 
to be honest, I haven't fully remembered what this one does. Oh, okay, so it's just a, it's a stereo offset thing. So that's proper stereo, mono, overhyped stereo. We all know that's never my favorite. And normalizing. When you're drawing waves, particularly in form like this, if we draw that, it's a bit quiet. So you can push normalization. Now be careful that can overdo the sound that you're getting. So, and it, that can push, you might want to pull back if you're using it, but use it if you need it. Otherwise, kind of don't. You can end up with too much volume, but whatever gets you there. In the middle, we have this global stuff here. It's nice if you're doing analogy kind of stuff or anything that you want to soften up to actually have a little bit of glide. As you can see, this is happening polyphonically. It doesn't give you as many switches as other synths, but between polyphonic uh, and then if we go down to mono. then Glide seems to work. So it's not a full implementation of all the options, but enough to get you there. We've then got this resolution button, or knob. Now that controls how fast the math is done as we move from one form to another. So if we pull it right the way down, it takes quite a while to get there. And the transition's a little rough. If we push it right the way up, it's a lot more detailed. So if you're finding that it's a little too, too steppy or jumpy, then look at increasing or decreasing your resolution. If you're one of those people who's still running on a Celeron or something unfortunate, uh, then you might need to use this with the lower resolution because obviously the higher the resolution, the more math it's doing per second as you're moving. It sets itself to the middle and generally that's enough to get you nice results. But if you're wanting hard leaps from one to another, uh, then you're going to need to set it to fast, otherwise it will take its while, it's time to morph across. Use it creatively. This one is a little unexpected here, but it's kind of good that he's given it because there's a lot of desire to modulate things, but not a lot of modulators. Even though we've got an envelope, a pair of LFOs and an MSEG, it's easy to run out because we've got a lot of slots willing to take modulation on board. So we can set the shape of our sound to be controlled by the envelope, as we expect. Envelope 1 is its other name, even though he didn't put the one here. Or gate, which means the note just turns on and off, and then I can use this to control something somewhere else. Let's say here, envelope one. Okay. So if you're going, oh geez, I just, I just, my kingdom for another envelope, flip it across the gate. The, uh, the sound will come in straight away, but a fair amount of the time, that will probably be okay for you. Let's go scrambler and filter. Versus. They're very consistent with um, with uh, um, um, SH-101s and the like, so you've probably met it before. You can have few voices, I think it's two, four, or eight. 
Well, he doesn't use the numbers, I don't know, but uh, it just, it's, that's your voice count. Um, pitch bend. We can go high, we can go low, we can go up to two octave. Because the sounds move so nicely, then it, it's nice to have that, that kind of range there. We've then got our envelope, which is an ADSR, so attack, detain, sustain, and release. And then we've got this fall or rise in the middle, a little weird. So that's our sound. Let's just turn that off. Now if I raise that, see how the sound comes back. Or if I've kept this at high, it'll fall. It's a bit of an unusual implementation. Again, it makes sense to Uhi. Um, I'm not opposed to it being there, but if it annoys you, just leave it set to zero. And whatever you set as your sustain value will stay. If you want that to sustain there and then fall at a different rate, then it allows you to have a more complex envelope. Uh, so it's not a bad thing to have at all. And then you can set velocity. How does velocity? impact that uh, but, but but you can use velocity here if you've used this for something else and you want to use velocity to change your overall synth volume but bear in mind that may behave differently to how it behaves here we then got options for how our envelope works we've got straight linear which means that the travel from this point to that point is just a straight line linear works beautifully in digital synthesis it sounds good Linear and digital synthesis go hand in hand. There's when quadratic. Let's just get rid of velocity there. Which means that attack and decay forms curve, which way the curve I never remember. And then V slope. Which means that you can actually vary the slope of our attack and decay. So if you're thinking um, uh, that, you, that you want to change how the envelope behaves, and this can really change the perceived sound that we hear because we're, we're changing the shaping. So if the, the linear envelope's not getting you there, then try the other options. Cool. We've got this LFO, which you've already seen me use a few times. It is hardwired to vibrato. If we put that to a filter, it's still going to vibrato, I believe. We can set a depth modifier, in this case, the mod wheel. It's simple and a little bit stuck one way, but remember this is a cut down and it's free. So if you're not getting the result you want, then just find another way to handle it. So waveform, you've got various different wave shapes. Including random sample and hold and random soft. And in some ways that sounds beautifully analog. It's obviously very virtual analog, that sort of liquid analog, which is VA, but it's beautiful. And that's what matters. Our rates are set in a strange way. This is just an Uhi thing. There is obviously a lot of sense in it, 
but seeing I don't play this way, it's always a little bit eh, but it does work. So you set your base amount, which obviously must be being reflected when we're set to here. That now becomes an offset thereof. So I should imagine that if that's 1 16th divided by 2, is my guess, then that's probably working at 1 8th. Um, no, not quite. Okay, whatever. He's got some kind of math in there. So you can set to a BPM amount and leave your rate there. Or offset faster or slower here. Now it is elegant enough once you understand it. Um, if I found that he had defaulted it to 1 8th, then I would probably actually have less frustration with it. 16th is too fast for where I would kind of want it to be. So it is a good compromise to do it this way. I've seen a few developers do it this way, and it is a good compromise as such to be able to do the the BPM sync and then allow people like me to go off on their own. It, it works. We can set to restart the LFO form every time on the gate to sync, you need to read the manual on that one. Single would indicate probably that we've got one across the whole thing. I know this one's a global envelope and then random means that it'll start its um, phase randomly on each key input, which will give you a more analogy sort of feel. And we can set a delay. And more than a delay, it's actually a fade in. So it means that it takes a little while for that LFO to come in. Really nice for um, for vibratos and things like this, where we might want that to fade in after a while. Nice. And again, the depth mod, we can use another modulator to control the output of that. LFO G, the fog, is essentially the same thing, but you seem to have a lot less control over timing. So it's, you, your times do seem to be pretty preset. You can move its phase. You can change how often it um, restarts. Um, interesting one, you'd have to play with that, to be honest, I haven't. So, the fog. But it, it's, it's there, and it, it is a bonus LFO. So, while it doesn't always do exactly what I wanted to do, it is there, and it is definitely able to be worked with. We then got this big thing, the MSEG. Let's pull this to MSEG. It's labeled one, obviously he's just borrowed the code out of Zebra, hence some of the labels not being exactly right. MSEG one indicating we've got more MSEGs. No, we don't. You could go by Zebra. There are again presets here in what we can do with them. It comes standard with this ADSR looking critter. We can drag and move these, and depending upon how you move it, you can get different types of curves. We can add points, we can make the whole thing work faster, we can double click up here to zoom in, we can set velocity, whether it's more or less on velocity, not that I seem to have worked out how to have much impact on that. Um, these are to do with how you draw points, but I, I didn't see a lot of difference. There's also the ability to loop, which actually we probably should set that one to loop start and that one to loop end. If we and another point. And this this one I did find, as I said, I find the MSEG just a little tricksy. Um, it's 
obtuse at times. And I, for the life of me, cannot work out how to always make it behave. I think I've got it, and then it doesn't. The thing that took me ages to work out was how do I get it to sustain? How do I make this an ADSR? If I've got it in this mode, that's just annoying. But if you grab one of these points and you've got to find the actual thing, and again, I'm not getting the results that I hope for, so it's making a fool of me because I had it yesterday. There you go. So if you grab, let's say we've got this here, loop start, if you grab this, drag it far enough, it'll lock. Now my start and end point are exactly the same point, and it's going to sustain. It all makes sense, but it took me a long time of reading the manual and going, there's nothing about this feature in here to actually get it. Again, it's just one of those situations that makes sense to who he would make sense to anyone who thinks like him, to anyone who doesn't think like him, it could be confusing. Apparently this um, this grid here is locked to quarter notes. Um, if that bothers you, again, go buy Zebra. Uh, there's nothing really wrong with it. You can lock onto parts of the grid or you can move off the grid, so it's not actually going to get in your way. Just go by feel. There's no real limit there. The, other, the only real limit that I've got here is that I have forgotten are... No, double-clicking, shift-clicking, alt-clicking... They're, they're all gives you different controls of these. Copy, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that can just turn that off, fine. There's a way to do it. And for the life of me, I cannot remember now. I was doing it yesterday, now I can't. That is an annoyance. The MSEG is probably the biggest letdown in a sense, in that until you can actually internalize and remember how it works, and if you're working with lots of different instruments, then you can forget and then find it really hard to actually have control of the MSEG, and the MSEG's pretty important. It's not so much if we're just using it as a straight thing here, but if we take it and control our uh, let's just grab a preset. <laughs> it's starting to annoy me. Let's go with a more complex waveform. Um, 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 uh, Spectro Smurfs, as promising. MSEG. So we get that really fascinating result. That's where your MSEG comes alive. As to how to make we'll get rid of, how to make points, I don't get it. It will be in the manual. We've then covered all of this, so that gets us to effects. We've got two sections, a modulation section and a delay section. We can turn each one on and off individually. The modulation effects also has as an EQ. So the modulation effects is chorus, a phaser chorus, and then just a straight phaser. Again, I find Uhi's approach to how he lays them out a little funny, but they do the job and they sound lovely. So you can change your center, your feedback, the depth at which we are wandering around, the mix,
and then our speed we might just minimize this so we can hear the chorus more then he adds in this next thing which is quad now I don't know whether that means two more voices to bring it to quad or four more voices doesn't really matter I guess but you can set its level and then set its phase offset. Oh, it's mono, that might explain why. They do have a certain sound to them, and it's not always a sound that I'm looking for, but it is a beautiful sound, and if it's what you're looking for, you, you will be very pleased with it. For onboard effects, they are typically a little odd in control compared to the basics, but they do provide something pretty special. There's the EQ, which I should cover before we get into the delay. Boost and cut. They don't show what they are, but they are interesting. I think they're peaks. Um, so they definitely can be used to change your sound. So whatever design decision he's made, I think for such a limited situation, good call. They are character effects. We've then got this delay. Now the delay again is, is kind of complex and it's tied to ratios and we've got lots of layers of mixing which leaves me confused maybe if they're all in the same spot or something there are a few different modes that obviously controls how they work you're going to want to read the manual on this one remember as I said one of them is we have got to RTFM otherwise you're not going to get the most out of this instrument these things will make sense so there's feedback Mix. So we can offset our timings here. Low pass, high pass, straight feedback, or cross feedback. Seeing these are left and rights, then it's feeding the left into the right, the right into the left and we can get rather excessive delays happening quite easily. They do sound nice, but I think if you're serious about effect control, uh, then, and you really like the sound of these, then you probably want to walk off and have a look at his standalone effects. They're going to be laid out a lot less crushed than this. But in terms of the sound and what they're bringing, we start with this, that's in single mode. Cannot complain about that. Put it into double. If we put on this phase, let's use Le Fog. Let's go a bit slower. That's adding a lot of body. Quad or elevens is. Which I think in this situation is a little overdone. It'll often be overdone. This is how we get such nice sounds out of this instrument. And it's the MSEG that's providing that actual movement.
There's no rate control here, but if we say half size, now it's going faster. It's a limit, but it's not a shocking one. By the time you get to needing to have that fine control, it's probably time to go get Zebra. And if you're liking the sound of this enough, get Zebra. Everything you've learned here will translate pretty darn directly across, uh, and that sounds lovely. It, there's nothing, I, I'm not into the this synth is better than that synth, but there's nothing that I'm aware of that really sounds better than this. There are things that people will like better than this, and that's fine. Remember, I don't actually have Zebra. I always wonder why I don't, but I don't. Uh, but that's not coming out of reason in any easy five minute session. Something about how he handles how all the bits and pieces go together brings us this lovely result. And it moves so beautifully. Final words, well, I've probably just given them already. It's obviously a cut down. You're essentially getting one oscillator and the bits and pieces are rounded enough to make up a synth out of Zebra. It's literally out of Zebra, as we can see from his code here, Le Fog G1. That's named that way because an, an Env1, even though this is just Env, because he's just pulled the code out. Um, yeah, tut tut for not having tied it, but you know, really, uh, it's free. It's incredibly beautiful in its sound. Um, its limits are something that if you see that you work with rather than against, just will help you make such beautiful sounds, which you're going to have to spend an awful lot of money to equal. Uh, and there is no particular downside to this other than getting your head around how Uhi's brain works to follow this. He follows conventions really well, it's just sometimes they make more sense to him than to me, which doesn't mean that they aren't going to make sense to you. The biggest frustration just being the MSEG being a little harder to control than is entirely obvious. But to my mind, reason probably slays everybody with regards to the simplicity of setup and use of MSEG. I like MSEGs for what you can get from them. I don't like MSEGs for the amount of time and trouble they take to set up. So it's a bit of a swings and roundabouts. There's always that kind of with MSEGs across the board, regardless of this one or otherwise. So if you are looking for a synth that sounds just absolutely top shelf, like top, top, top shelf, uh, and are either just going to run on the presets or are prepared to really put in the time and trouble to understand how it works and make it your own, yeah, there's no higher praise there than perhaps Zebralet. I love Surge for what you can do with Surge. It's a lot more complex. There's a lot more that you've got to dig in to make, and its sound is rawer than this. But in terms of smooth, beautiful sound with a reasonably simple architecture that can deliver an awful lot, then Zebralet probably has no equal at all. I see people talking about uh, Tyrell or whatever it is, the other one, an earlier Uhi, which is free. Why would you bother when you can get Zebralet, which will cover all the same ground, only better and nicer. So no, I'm not a big fan of, uh, of I think it's called Tyrell. Uh, Zebralet is definitely the far superior sound engine for everything. It doesn't matter whether you're looking for smooth analogy kinds of sounds or this beautiful liquid digital. 
Zebra Let is it. Just got to school yourself to RTFM and take your time to understand how he puts it together. And you see what I've created here whilst really having more attention on yammering. So conclusion is, it's brilliant. Um, it might well encourage you to go buy a zebra. But where is Zebra 3? Um, if you have any questions, please not about Uhi or support. That's for him to handle. Um, also, please not about the clap um, thing. Go have a look over at Bitwig. Um, and if and or Uhi has a page on it, I'm sure whether he does, but have a look into that. But it's early, early days. They're only showing um, betas of that right now. But... Bitwig and he never really seemed to put a foot wrong, so if they're showing it, I should imagine it is going to happen and be pretty good in its own way. Uh, time will tell on that one, so but please don't ask me because I don't know any more than I have that you can see. But if you've got questions about just the subject in general, pop them on down below, preferably after hitting subscribe uh, and Make a clear question, please, if I don't understand it. And if it's an audio-related thing, maybe actually play me the thing. If I can't hear it, <laughs> it's hard to answer. Uh, otherwise, you can pop over to higherhertz.com. There's a different stream of information over there, and you can get your sticky fingers on the um, Hertz delay. There may even be something else by the time you get there. Um... And that is well worth having. Combination of Zebra Let and Hertz Delay probably would be very, very nice. Go out there, have a play with this. There's nothing but time to get your head around it, and it's it, it, it'll reward you even as you're doing it. Even as I was learning, as I said, it was actually going into a piece which is finished and will be on my next record, and probably will use Zebra Let more now that I've taken some time to actually understand it just that little bit better and realize that, yeah, I really can get a beautiful liquid sound out of this that's much harder to get out of Reason. It doesn't stop me from loving Reason. I'm not going to abandon Europa or anything silly like that, uh, because I don't always want this sound. Uh, but where I want something that's a bit more like this, Uhi is just the master of it. So you have a wonderful day.